strong 4.6 magnitude Idaho quake close to Yellowstone supervolcano. This is the daily quake swarm in a volcanic field, Craters of the Moon in Idaho. And we're going to, we're going to take a look. This is Idaho pictures, Idaho volcano, volcano, volcanic field, lava and pictures. As you can see, this is a beautiful lava flow we're going to see on the map. Look at it. It looks pristine. And this is the path that the hotspot took in order to go to Yellowstone. You can see Yellowstone on three o'clock position on the map. 16 million years ago, 15, 14 million years ago, 12, 11, 10, and then going on. And you can see that that is exactly where we have the craters of the moon uh, area of uh, north of Boise, Idaho. And now we'll take a look at where that mantle plume is coming from. It's coming from Baja, California. And the eastern part of that Y-shaped plume is coming through Salt Lake City into Yellowstone and then uh, turning west 190, uh, 90, 180 degrees, 90 degrees from Yellowstone. And it's quite near the surface, as you can see. That's Idaho right there in between the uh, Pacific Ocean and Yellowstone. Let's take a look at the maps now. So Berkeley, and we have all the uh, plotted earthquakes 4.6 here at 10.6 kilometers depth and this is the area of Idaho and uh, okay here we are we're north of Boise Idaho and taking a look at the map of as to where how close we are to Yellowstone panning out this is the area of our 6.5 magnitude earthquake that hit on the night of March 31st April 1st this is Yellowstone Lake right there and Hebgen Lake. This is the area of Yellowstone Supervolcano. And just a little bit further south, panning out, we'll get to Salt Lake City right here. Salt Lake City, Salt Lake, Utah. This area has nine volcanoes panning this way, and Salt Lake City has eight volcanoes south of Salt Lake City in Utah, right here, along the fault line right here. All the rivers are fault lines, as we know, and Yellowstone right here. That's the mantle plume that we saw, that imaginary seven, like that. And this is our uh, areas of volcanoes of nine volcanoes of Idaho, Blackfoot Lava, Cerro Grande, Craters of the Moon. This is Craters of the Moon, our located northwest and our largest lava field of Snake River Plain, Idaho. Volcanic fuel contains over 60 lava flows, 25 cinder cones, and eight eruptive fissure systems and, co and covers an area of 1,600 square kilometers, according to Volcano Discovery. And this is our map of the area of the, the, according to Yellowstone National Park, the map showing us the historic eruptions along that plain of Utah. There we go. 16 million years ago from Nevada. We're having the Nevada quakes now. Um, there are the ones that are the, the whole the whole area of Nevada is volcanic, full of calderas. But uh, this is the area of Nevada, just east of uh, Long Valley Caldera, right there. That's Long Valley Caldera. Proof of Nevada earthquakes, earthquakes have been going on there, sometimes hundreds a day. Uh, they seem to be getting less. And this is just east of Long Valley Caldera, supervolcano of California. And we have the 5.8 here just north of Ridgecrest, between Ridgecrest and California. Yesterday, the 5.8 magnitude and a tremendous amount of uh, earthquake swarms going on. But the, according to the map coming from Nevada into Idaho, north of Utah, six million, 16 million years ago, the hotspot track across western U.S., 15 million years ago, 14 million years ago, 12, 11, 10, 7, 6, 4, and 1, 2, and then 640,000 years ago, where we have the caldera today, and uh, it seems to be going up this way. Okay, so this is the craters of the moon that we're talking about right now, and going back to our, this is the shape map of the area. Uh, the intensity of the earthquake of only 4.6. Uh, and this is Yellowstone Lake. 
that's that Z over there is uh, Hebgen Lake. And let's go to our borders. So you can see it. That's it. That's the border of Wyoming. And of course, Yellowstone also flanks over into Montana and Idaho. But um, I just want the aerials to see that if you extrapolate the shake lines, it could have shaken Yellowstone yet again, even though it was a 4.6. Uh, and then here we go. Of course, we have Salt Lake right there. It could, could even shake in Salt. This is the beautiful craters of the moon that we saw, that lava flow. That lava flow is pristine looking even today. Look at that right there. That's a huge lava flow. It's what? It's over 30 to 60 miles across. So um, how many people felt that? Uh, if we refresh that, it'll be more than that. It's 1,563. And that's... Uh, I don't think we'll have any regional information, but this is the uh, track that we saw before. The uh, magma hotspot volcano and the Yellowstone supervolcano coming through, of course, the area as we saw before going through Idaho. There's magma under there. It doesn't mean that because the caldera is uh, the latest one was in Yellowstone that we don't have any more magma there. As we saw from the uh, man mantle plume map, yes, that imaginary seven has magma still under there. So the magma, the molten rock from below the Earth's crust, is close to the surface in the greater Yellowstone area. The shadow body of magma is caused by heat convection, convection in the mantle. Plumes of magma rising through the mantle, melting rocks in the crust, creating magma reservoirs or partially molten, partially solid rock. The mantle plumes transport heat from deep in the mantle to the crust and created what we call a hotspot volcanism. Hotspots leave a trail of volcanic activity as tectonic plates drift over them, as the North American plate drifted west over the last 16 and a half million years. The hotspot that now resides under the greater Yellowstone area uh, are left a swath of volcanic deposits across Idaho Snake River Plain, as we saw before. Heat from the mantle has melted rocks in the crust, creating two magma chambers of partially, uh, partially molten, partially solid rock. Uh, there were the recent, most recent eruptions, 2.1 million years ago, among the largest volcanic eruptions known to man, coated almost 6,000 square miles of, with ash as far as away as Missouri. The total volcanic material estimated to be over 6,000 times the volume of ejected uh, material from the 1980 Mount St. Helens volcanic eruption in Washington. The second significant, though smaller, uh, volcanic eruption within the western edge of the first caldera about 1.3 million years ago, and the third about 640,000 years ago, the Yellowstone caldera created 30 by 45 mile wide. Since then, 80 smaller eruptions occurred. About 174,000 years ago, one of these created what is now West Thumb of Yellow Lake, Yellowstone Lake. During and after these explosive eruptions, huge lava flows of viscous rhyolitic lava and less voluminous basalt lava flows partially filled the caldera floor and surrounding terrain. The youngest of these lava flows 70,000 years ago, pitchstone rhyolite flow in the west southwest corner of Yellowstone National Park. Um, so future volcanic activity. Over the next thousands of millions of years, probably, in the next few hundred years, not likely. The most likely active would be lava flows, such as those that occurred after the last major eruption. A lava flow would ooze slowly over months and years, allowing plenty of time for park rangers to evaluate the situation and protect people. No scientific evidence indicates such lava flow will occur soon. And this is what it looks like causing the uh, mantle plumes that we said before, the, that the plume comes up. So this is what's going on there. Uh, the earthquake swarm is still ongoing from the 6.5 magnitude earthquake that hit out of nowhere on March 31st. That was about two weeks after the 5.7 Salt Lake City earthquake that hit on March 18. So all of you there, there please be very careful. Thank you for your support.
If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.